Hello, my name is Emily. My channel is called Time with Books. Today I'm going to talk about DNFs. Oh, DNFs. I also want to kind of touch down on the reason why I DNF this book. This is called Reverie by Ryan Masala. There are several reasons, and there's a lot of reasons to DNF a book, right? You're just not interested, or it's just not what you're feeling at the moment, or maybe you actively dislike it, which is what I felt about this book, or what I began to feel before I decided just to give up on it. So I bought this book. Honestly, it sounded so fantastic. It sounded wonderful. The cover is absolutely gorgeous. The blurb says some dreams chase you back. I was instantly intrigued. I'll give you a look at the back of the novel as well. I was excited to read this. This is the first book that I picked up in the month of February because I was just, I was all in. I was there to read this one and I was ready to love it. I'll give you a look inside of the front cover as well. I'm not going to read all this out, but if you like, you can pause it and sort of read it. I'll try to make sure you get a clear view. This goes over a little bit more of the premise of the story. And so I was extremely disappointed to find that I don't like this book. And let's get into some of the reasons why. Here we are on page number 17, and there's specifically this paragraph. Ah, how astute. They told me you were a clever one, the man winked conspiratorially, making Cain grin. This lore is occupied with, I don't know, whatever occupies the pathologically heterosexual. Perhaps trying to find just one more use for his three-in-one shampoo, conditioner, body wash? Maybe he ought to use it as a mouthwash, too. It might help that dingy rainbow of a smile he keeps showing everyone. I want to be very clear that I don't think it's okay to make fun of the way people look. I think that's a bad move. And I also want to make it equally clear that I'm not going to sign on for anyone bashing anyone else because of their preferences. Whatever their preferences are, I'm not down with that. I'm not cool with that. I don't like that. And furthermore, I think it's actually sort of destructive to have that in a YA novel because this is not meant for adults. This is meant for young people and it's setting an extremely bad example. So, moving on, and this isn't exactly uh, something egregious, but it's an, I have several examples of why I didn't enjoy the writing style and the way that the writer was writing this novel. We have here on page number 25, it says, Kane's voice was a pale blue whisper. I think what the author is trying to do is use flowery language and rich descriptions throughout this novel, but for me, they fell flat, and they often didn't make any sense to the point where they were very odd. I don't really think of anybody's voice, whether it's quiet or loud, as a color, so that didn't make much sense to me. And here we are on page number 30. Here's another example of why I didn't like the writing. Down a steep bank, the creek slid over its bed of worn rocks, silent and unbothered by every and everything Cain was not. This was very odd to me. I thought, why would you be comparing a young man to a creek? Of course it's everything he's not. He's a person, and a creek is a creek. It's part of the landscape. It just, it didn't make sense to me. I thought it was very strange. Moving along, we come to page number 34. Again, there's this sort of strange way of writing. It says, around him the night filled with wings and chanting cic cicadas, a strange sort of laughter that filled Cain with white hot dread. They're insects. They're, they're making insect noises and it's not laughter. Like, when you hear a cicada, it doesn't sound like it's laughing. It, it's like a drone. Anyway, I thought that was very odd. And again, it didn't work for me. And I was thinking, why is the writer writing this way? So moving along to page number 36, we come to another example where it seems almost like someone is being viewed in a sort of negative light because of the way that they look. So here we have her copper hair was pulled into a sloppy bun that looked more like a nest than a hairstyle. Her bangs were frizzy, awning above, thick-lashed, worried eyes. She wore no makeup, not even chapstick, from the looks of it. Okay, so you have to keep in mind that in this scene, when he encountered this girl, she was out for a jog. I don't know why anyone would think that they would have full, like, makeup to go for a jog when you're going to be outside and getting sweaty and everything. And the way that it says her hair is in a sloppy bun, she's jogging. She's not going to prom. It It's not like the way that she was looking was inappropriate and then at the same time I don't think it's a good message to send to young people that you know you 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 need to wear makeup I, I don't understand I would my message if I had written this book would have been like wear makeup if you want wear makeup uh, don't wear makeup if you don't want to like I don't understand why it was sort of presented this way and it's almost kind of offensive so then uh, a few pages later we have another example of the writing that just, it didn't resonate with me and it didn't make sense to me personally. It's page number 43. Uh, it's after the main character gets a haircut. 
and his sister tells him, you look like a poodle who was drafted into the military. I read this and I was like, he looks like a poodle? He's a boy, not a dog, and dogs don't get drafted into the military because they're not people. It doesn't really make sense to me. I thought it was very strange and very odd to say you look like a poodle who was drafted into the military. What? It, I don't even understand. And I th thought that th this book could use quite a lot more editing, to be honest. There are parts, just from what I've read, the short the short amount that I read was, was not making me happy. It was not feeling good. It was not even feeling particularly positive. It was actually uh, negative. And I found myself kind of avoiding this one. I was dreading picking it up. Whereas when I first started this book, I was excited and I was ready to read it. So that's just some examples of why I decided to DNF this one. If you have any questions or any comments, if you want to give any reasons why you DNF, or maybe you read this and you really like this one, uh, it's always, you know, a personal, a very subjective thing, I suppose, when we do decide to DNF a book. This is why I DNF this one. And if I have similar issues with books in the future and I'm finding that I'm not liking them, it's not resonating with me, it's leaving me confused or even a little bit offended, I think I'm just going to end up DNFing in the future as well. It's a shame. I wanted to love this one and I really didn't. But I guess that was just something I wanted to discuss a little bit. If you're still watching, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video and I hope that you have a great day. Until next time, bye!